How do you make an existing cookie cutter investment property positive cash flow? Hey, I'm Ryan from onproperty.com.au, helping you find positive cash flow property. But what if you already own a property, a standard cookie cutter property? Maybe it's a new build, maybe it's an existing property that isn't a new build. What if you already purchased that property? It's negatively geared. How can you flip that around and generate some positive cash flow and turn that property into a positively geared property? This is an absolutely great question that was asked to me by Adrian. So thanks for asking that question, Adrian. If you've got questions, guys, send them to ryan at onproperty.com.au so I can create a video about them. So there are two ways, just two ways. Okay, there's a lot of different ways, but they all come under two main umbrellas to convert a negatively geared property, a cookie cutter property into a positive cash flow property. There is decrease the expenses of the property, increase the income of the property. They're your two options. They're really the only two options you have. So let's delve into these in more detail because I know that you want to hear some more ideas than that. Let's look at decreasing the expenses. This is pretty limited in what you can do. Biggest area you can usually decrease your expenses is in your loan. A great option to decrease your loan for a lot of investors is to go from principal and interest only principal and interest loan to an interest only loan. This will decrease the loan repayment significantly and could be enough to put you in a positive cash flow position. So if you haven't already done that, go and speak to a mortgage broker about the opportunity to do an interest only loan. The second thing you can do is to shop around and to try and find a better loan. I think it was someone that I know recently got a loan for under 4%, 4% interest, crazy. And I know people who are paying over 5% or more for their interest. So by shopping around, you could potentially lower the cost of your mortgage. If you get really desperate, and I don't really recommend this, uh, but if you get really desperate and you just need something to push over the line, you could consider self-managing your property, which is going to save you probably around 6 to 8% of the rental income of a property. So what's that on $400 a week? That's something like... 25 to 30 dollars or something like that a week so it's not huge savings uh, but if you need that little push then that's something that you can consider in terms of decreasing expenses but that kind of ends it for decreasing expenses you don't have a lot of opportunities to decrease your expenses on your property because a lot of the things are out of your control water heater breaks you got to put up two thousand dollars to put a new water heater in not really in your control so it's very difficult sorry for the dog barking in the background if you can hear that the next thing to look at is how to increase your income now the person who asked this said that they had a cookie cutter property and i think the best approach to turn that into a positive cash flow property is to stop thinking cookie cutter and start thinking, how can I maximize the rental income of this property? Think outside the box. Now that may be keeping it as a cookie cutter property and improving it, but there are a lot of things outside the box that could be could significantly improve your rental income if you were to consider them and think about them. So the first thing that I would do is I would go to my rental manager, I would go to my agent and I would say, I need to increase the rental income of this property by X amount. Do your figures, work out how much extra you need in order to generate a positive cash flow. If that's $20 a week, that's more achievable than if it's going to be $100 or $200 per week. But go to your agent and say, look, I need to achieve this growth in rental income for my property. It's negatively geared. I can't have it anymore. I'm done with it. I need to grow the rental income. Ask them, what sort of houses in the area are renting for that amount. What do I need to do to my property for it to rent to that amount? And they will happily tell you. For them, if they're going to rent your property for an extra $100 a week, that's more money in the bank for them. They want to be a good rental manager. They should give you some advice there. So first thing I would do is ask them for their advice. Wouldn't necessarily take it, but I would definitely take it on board, consider it, and then use that as I move forward. So go and ask your agent. You can consider things like minor renovations. So you could paint the kitchen, paint the bathroom. You could do new carpet or a lick of paint all around. It's amazing the difference a lick of paint and a new carpet will make. As a renter, there are a lot of properties that we see online that have bright blue carpet. And basically my wife, she sees the bright blue carpet and she clicks next. 
We do not go and view that property unless we are really desperate because we do not want to live in a property that has bright blue carpet. Same goes for a pink bathroom or a really ugly kitchen. It's amazing what you can achieve with some white paint to improve an old bathroom or an old kitchen. It's amazing what you can achieve with some fresh, neutrally colored carpet. Not bright blue, not you know all these crazy colors. Something nice, something modern. And so... Something like that, minor renovation, could set you back a couple of hundred to a couple of thousand dollars, but could get you a significant increase in your rental income if you do it correctly. You could also consider major renovations. Now, I consider major renovations things like adding an extra room or putting an extension on your property. Maybe it is gutting the kitchen and redoing the kitchen to a higher standard or doing something like that to the bathroom. You need to be really careful where your money, where you spend your money, and again, Great to go and ask the agent and say, look, I've got some money to do some renovations to this property. Where's it going to be best spent? And they can give you some advice on that. So major renovations could help increase the income above the money spent so that you can generate a positive cash flow. You can also consider some outside of the box things like dual occupancy. So converting what is a single dwelling. So maybe it's a four bedroom house where you can only have one tenant into a dual occupancy property where you've got two two bedroom houses that you can rent out both of them. You could potentially increase the income there. Obviously you need to check with council and things like that if you're allowed to do that. You could consider student accommodation as well. So by renting out by the room, to students or actually to anyone, uh, you can get a higher value rent for your property there. You could look at Airbnb as well. Now this is an outside of the box way of doing it, but I know friends of mine who have rented out their property for, I think they got like $7,000 in the space of four to six weeks for their property, which if they had rented it out full time over that period, they probably would have got you know, somewhere between two to three thousand dollars. So this was peak holiday period, and so they got a lot more money for it. Uh, but that's something that you could potentially consider uh, is Airbnb being the property. So dual occupancy, Airbnb. You could consider building a granny flat out the back. Again, check with your local council. But there's a lot of companies out there, a lot of builders who will build you a granny flat. Uh, Generally, I see the cost around $100,000 to build a two-bedroom granny flat. In some areas, like in Sydney, it can be really easy to get these done. And then you can rent them out for significantly increased rental incomes. You know, they've seen granny flats renting for, that cost $100,000 renting for $400, $500 a week in the right areas within Sydney. So granny flats are something to consider. More advanced things would be like subdivision and potentially building a property on the subdivision, or you could subdivide and sell off the land, or you could subdivide, sell off the house, keep the land. You know, you can play around with subdivision. Another opportunity that isn't really done out there, but I feel like it definitely could be, is you could charge more for people if they have pets. So you could advertise your property as a pet-friendly property, but it's going to cost more if they have pets. And so that's something it's really hard for people with pets to get accommodation and to rent because so many places don't want pets. Well, if you do your numbers and you say, well, I can get an extra $20, $30 a week because I'm allowing people to have pets, maybe that will push you over the line. Lastly, some things to think about. Um, Firstly, are you claiming depreciation on your property and are you claiming it correctly? Have you had a depreciation schedule done? Because if you can claim more depreciation, you can potentially get more tax back, which could put you in a positive cash flow situation. Now, obviously, speak to a quantity surveyor, speak to your accountant about this, but definitely getting a depreciation schedule done so you're maximizing your tax deductions is going to help get towards that positive cash flow situation. And then the last suggestion that I have is quite outside of the box, and that is to consider selling your property via vendor finance. Now, this is where you sell your property to a new buyer, just like you would sell a property to anyone, but Instead of them going out, getting money from the bank and paying you in a lump sum, you're actually extending a loan to them. So you're saying, I will sell you this property, but you just need to pay me a deposit of X amount, and then I'm going to charge you an interest rate of X percent. And so there's a whole process there that you can go through where you can actually sell your property for probably more than it's worth 
via vendor finance to people who can't get a traditional bank loan, they generally pay a higher than average interest rate as well, which can turn a profit because you've got probably a lower mortgage with a lower interest rate, charging a higher amount with a higher interest rate, which is going to create uh, passive income for you. So this is out of the box. This isn't for everyone. This is, uh, you need to be very active if you're going to do this. You need to get the right legal advice and things like that, but definitely can be done in most states in Australia. So check with a lawyer or something like that, a solicitor, if you wanna go ahead and do this. If you just Google vendor finance solicitor, there will be some that come up for you. So that's kind of, I guess a last ditch effort, if you're really struggling with negative gearing, you want the positive cash flow, but you can't get it through rent alone, you could consider selling via vendor finance. So there you have some ideas about how to make an existing cookie cutter investment property positive cash flow. We can try and decrease our expenses, mainly our mortgage by getting a better interest rate, considering interest only as well. We could go self-managed if we want and manage the property ourselves, though it's probably not advised. It's a lot of work for not a lot of money. And then we can look at ways we can increase the rent. So talk to the agent, minor renovations, major renovations and extensions, dual occupancy, uh, renting out by the room, granny flat, subdivision, charging people more to have pets. Look also at your depreciation, make sure you're maximizing your tax deductions. And lastly, you could consider selling via vendor finance. So I hope that this has given you some ideas with whatever property you have. Generally, people who have cookie cutter properties, if it's brand new or something like that, can be very difficult to increase the rental income for the property. You really need to get outside of the box. You really need to think about different things, get to understand your market, think about, okay, in what scenario, in what situation will this market pay more for my property than what they're currently paying? Because often the suggestion of asking your agent, they might not have any ideas. They might just be an agent who is happy, doing open for inspections, um, you know, collecting rents, and that's about it. They might not be super creative thinkers. And so sometimes you need to really get creative with your thinking, look at the market, assess the market, like go through and assess a lot of different options until you find the one that's going to generate a positive cash flow for you. Because the chances are you're not just going to be able to increase the rent $10 per week. You're not just going to be able to paint the house and magically you're going to be positive cash flow. You're going to have to do some drastic things in order to turn it into a positive cash flow situation. So I wish you all the best turning your negatively geared cookie cutter investment property into a positive cash flow property so you can start seeing the passive income coming in which will give you security and flexibility i wish you the absolute best with your investment property and until next time stay positive